I'm not even be able to play because I was laughing so much. Just the sound of his voice was just putrid. Apologising after every single song. I'm sorry to have to do this to you all. It's harder than looks. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being bad. Sorry. At the end of the set, Cho tried to do some merch and had kids tell him he was amazing and ask him to sign things. Looking back, it was the worst thing I've ever heard, but I still think I did okay. <laughs> Bass player at the time, Cashy, uh, was having a kid. We had a word with him one night in Frankfurt, I think it was. He said he still wanted to be in the band, but the more we were overseas, the more it became apparent that it wasn't going to work. I just said, look, basically, you're not into it, and you're having a kid, you should just go home. Baby! Let's go, Cashy! Hey, Cashy! We found ourselves in the interesting position of being stuck in Europe with no shows, no record label, and no bass player. We'd done this before. We'd replaced the bass player with someone that looked the part and could play bass and was obviously had gear and stuff like that, and it didn't work out. We'd rather someone that could just get the job done, but someone that we could hang out with as well. So we thought, why not just fucking get someone that we're mates with? Like, who cares if he can play bass? just as long as he's sort of got some musical rhythm to him. We started throwing around ideas for bass players. Then we thought, why not just get Pi? this weird, long, ugly dude. He looks like a squashed frog. Pipe is a filthy animal. <laughs> <laughs> he has this hair that covers this fucking dog box looking head. He's just fucked up. He'd sell merch for us and just do funny shit and like eat cockroaches. You don't look in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I guess I was just a little kid that liked it when my mates would laugh at me for doing something stupid. I guess I sort of enjoyed being fucking rough. Oh, oh, oh. I called him up that night from Frankfurt and said, do you want to be in the band? At the start, I thought it was a joke when he called me. He's like, hey, Cash is leaving. Do you want to come to Europe and finish this tour with us? I thought it was great because he's always there with them and he's just a mate and they could have fucking got anyone they wanted. Like, I'm sure there was bass players all over the world wanting to do it. We were really skeptical if he could actually play, but we knew he was a good kid. And he was a good friend, and for us at that point in time, that's all we wanted, was a friend. I sat at home for a couple of days before I had my flight to London, just trying to figure out the songs on bass, even though I'd never played bass in my life. We flew him out like a week later, and he started jamming. We had a show booked in Paris. What we didn't realise was the show was on a boat. <laughs> is that where my first show is? He dropped his pick, I don't know how many times. He'd trip over the drum kit, he'd fall over the monitors. I was sort of on the other side of the world, freaking out. He was terrible at the start of the band, but we knew that. We knew what to expect. We knew he'd never played bass before. But I think it was probably the first time in the band's career we were completely comfortable with the person we had on stage with us. <laughs> Again, we were on a tight budget. Our financial resources weren't exactly booming. We were way too poor to afford hotels. Plus, we didn't really like them. You just stay with people you meet at the shows or stay with whoever you can, really. We realised we didn't know anyone. We didn't speak the same language. We had no place to sleep. And we just ended up pulling up to some field and sleeping behind this hedge. From then on, it just clicked. We were like, we're going to do this every night. It was great. And it set a precedent for the rest of tours. We started sleeping outside. Sleep 
we found a ship one day on the beach, just this old rusted out ship and this rock floor and it was just a perfect sleeping environment so we went and slept in there. Slept in some mental like field in Czechoslovakia. We got here about four in the morning, the sun was coming up, we slept in a cow paddock <laughs> and I got attacked by ants. I remember them telling stories about how they'd just be driving and, and they'd go, well, let's turn down that dirt road and, and see if we can find a place to sleep and then just drive around and go, yep, that looks good. Let's sleep in that little clearing of rocks. That, that looks awesome. It's getting better. It's almost sausage. That's getting better. Is that better? Is that improving? <laughs> I agree that. Mosquitoes, rain. I remember some of the places we slept at. My pillow was a curb. We were away for like five and a half months. I think we stayed in two hotels maybe the whole time. After Europe, we headed over to the States for the first time. We landed in LAX for the first time and immediately found our new love which was California. It was hot, there was surf, we hadn't been in the surf for about a month. Every day it was just like four to six foot, just these fucking wedges peeking up and we just go and body surf it, just have the best time ever. Uh, it basically meant everything that we were deprived of in cold grey Europe. We loved the wedge, we loved burritos, <laughs> and also we loved the place we discovered called the Flow Rider. I'm not sure when we found it, but when we did, we couldn't believe what we were seeing. It was a perfect barrel and we just lost our minds. We thought, I can't wait, I'm just going to get so barreled. We were all pretty shitty at it at first, but Jeff was amazing. I'd have to say I'm pretty good at a lot of sports. I beat most people at just about anything. But flow rider. He'd have his little hands and he'd spin them sideways like this and fall over, over the falls, and he's done. It can be the funnest thing in the world, but as myself and other people have found out, it can also break you. You can go there, let down your hip, any time that you like. You can stomp your feet, move to the beat, keep it going all night. Everybody's dancing on Saturday night. We drove to Denver and started our first tour in the States. On the show side of things, everyone sort of basically did a piss on us. Like, we loved driving around and seeing the country, but again, we had no press, we had no nothing. We weren't even on the flyer. And that was the great thing about them going to do that. And that's kind of what they do, that's what Parkway do. It's that great work ethic they've got, which I think has helped them get so far. You know, Graham probably could get charged for slave labour or something, because this band, like, never, ever fucking seems to stop. Yeah. 